Hello, welcome back to Storytime. How many of you know of heroes in your life? Right now, we have a lot of people who are out working and doing the best they can for all of us, and they're kind of our heroes. But today we have a different kind of a hero. It's called Superdog, the heart of a hero. And it's written by Carolyn Buehner, and Mark Buehner is the illustrator. Superdog, the heart of a hero. Dexter was a little dog. His legs were little. His tail was little. His body was little. He looked like a plump sausage sitting on four little meatballs. Being the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up when they played chase. And after a while, they forgot to invite him at all. No one really seemed to notice him, except when Clevis, the tomcat, demonstrated how he could stand right over Dex and not even ruffle his fur. And as you can tell, his friends think that is hilarious. Dex doesn't think so. Yes, everything about Dex was little, except for his dreams. He wanted just to be a hero. He could just see it. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. But wanting and being are two different things. Dex lived on dreams until one day, after crawling out from under Clevis yet again, he decided there had to be more to life than gazing at the underside of a cat. There had to be more to him. If he could be a hero, he would. So Dex started training. He read every superhero comic book he could find. He watched every hero movie ever made, he went to the library. Furiously, he studied, knowing everything depended on him. Dex figured that a hero must have strong muscles. He needed exercise and lots of it. Dex started trotting up to the corner and back every morning. He hopped over every crack in the sidewalk. Now you can tell he's working really hard because his little tongue is just hanging down there big time. He struggled to climb the garbage pile, up and over and down, then up and down and over all again. All day long he worked, day after day even at bedtime, when he wanted to flop on the rug with his tongue <laughs> hanging out. Dex forced himself to circle five extra times. The mighty Dex pressed on through wind and rain and storm and fatigue. Fatigue means he is really, really tired. When it got easier to run to the corner and back, Dex did it again and then again. Then he dragged a sock filled with sand as he ran, and then two socks. When Clevis was bored and stood in the middle of the sidewalk to block his way, Dex dropped to the ground and slid right under him. He was too busy to be bothered by Clevis. 
Dex was tired. He was sore. He was working so hard that he almost forgot what he was working for. But one night, as he dragged himself to bed after his last set of push-ups, Dex stopped in front of the mirror and flexed. Flexed means you take your arm and you just press it up in the air and you should have a bulge of a muscle. I don't have any to flex. Dex stopped and he could feel them. He could see them. Muscles. Faster than a rolling ball, stronger than the toughest rawhide, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. Now Dex didn't take the stairs, he skimmed them. He leaped over hydrants, he vaulted up curbs, he could jump over the garbage mountain without touching the top, he could run like the wind. He felt as if his legs had springs. Only one thing was missing. Finally, a small brown package arrived. Dex ripped it open. His hero suit. It was red with a shiny green cape, and it fit like a glove. That means it fit perfectly. Dex loved the way it felt. He loved the way it looked. And he loved the feeling he had when he put it on. He was ready. With the courage of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of a hero. When Dex went out in his suit for the very first time, he looked up the street and down. He noticed a young pup trying to cross the street. Dex sprang into action. May I help you? He asked. He guided the wide-eyed pup across the street and grinned as the pup stared at him with its mouth hanging open. The pup whispered, Wow, it's Superdog! Super dog. Dex liked the sound of that. Of course, when Clevis saw Dex, he just had to comment. Hey, Dex, where's the party? And when he saw him a few days later, Clevis called out, Look, everybody, it must be Halloween. Anybody got a treat for Dex? Dex was so busy that he was able to ignore Clevis for the most part. The only time his face even got red was when Clevis yelled, Where'd you get that dress up? Dex had to wonder if Clevis saw anything but the suit. Didn't he understand that the suit was just a way to let people know he was there to help. The sun glinted off of his emerald cape as Superdog raced to the rescue. There was a mouse he saved from the sewer, a perch, a purse snatcher he tackled. He fixed his neighbor's sprinkler. He found a lost kitten, pulled a rat away from a live wire, tracked down a lost wallet, put out a trash fire, and organized a neighborhood cleanup day. It seemed that now, whenever anyone needed help, they turned to Dex. And Dex had never been happier. Late one evening, there was a banging at the door. When Dex answered, it seemed as if the whole neighborhood was yipping and yowling in a panic. 
It's Clevis, they shouted. He's stuck in a tree. Hurry, Dex, hurry. Dex raised his eyebrows. It was not like Clevis to move enough to get into any trouble. In a flash, he was dressed and ready. It was clearly a desperate situation. In other words, somebody needed help. As he got closer, Dex could see Clevis. He had been chasing a squirrel to the top of the tree, but had slipped and was hanging by one claw from a slender branch. He was yowling for all he was worth. I'm slipping, Clevis screeched. Help me! Dex looked desperately around for something to climb on. There were no boxes or ladders, not even any trash cans. Then Dex looked at the crowd. everybody, Dex shouted. I've got an idea. Dex leaped onto the end of the teeter-totter facing the tree, pushing it to the ground. Everybody on the other end. One, two, three. All the animals jumped together on the other end of the teeter-totter, catapulting Dex into the air. That means Dex flew through the air. He soared over the crowd, his ears and cape streaming out behind him. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. Dex scrambled onto the branch next to Cleveland. Quickly, he pulled off the cape and tied its four corners onto the screeching cat. Jump, Dex shouted. Jump, Clevis! I'm not sure if Clevis is really crazy about that idea. With an ear-piercing shriek, ah! Clevis let go. The billowing cape caught the air and parachuted the big cat to the ground. Dex backed up and slid to the ground amidst the cheers of the crowd. Super dog! Super dog! Super! Super dog! Super dog! Dex was bruised and tired, but he forgot his discomfort as Clevis sheepishly lumbered over, still tangled in the green cape. Thanks, Dex. You really are a hero. Dex didn't think he could feel any better, but he did. Just a little. The next day when Clevis sidled up next to him and whispered, Say, Dex, could I be your partner? Dex looked the big tomcat up and down. Hmm. It would take a lot of work to turn Clevis into a hero. He could hardly wait. Sure, Dex said with a grin. Sure. The end of Superdog, the heart of a hero. So just know that all around you are heroes. They have worked hard to become the hero that they are. And please remember to appreciate all of them and tell them thank you.